Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to another Yellow Chair. I hope this finds you well. Today, we're going to be talking about how to live a spirit-filled life that's pleasing to God and that brings you fullness of joy. Well, you know, my wife, when I bring her flowers, she first admires them and how good they look and then she'll smell them uh, to, for the pleasantries of the scent but then she rushes them to a vase full of water and plant food because she knows their life is limited. You see they've been cut off from the source of the soil that was giving them nutrients to look so good and to smell so good and so she wants to get them back into a life-giving source to give them an expanded amount of time for her enjoyment. And you know, in the same way, Jesus teaches us that we need to be grafted into his sourcing, into his life, in order to produce characteristics that are pleasing to God. That in and of ourselves, apart from his nature and his intervention, we are not able to produce a God-honoring life or God-like characteristics. And so he wants to give us his nature, his Holy Spirit, to abide with us in order to help us to produce life for other people, which is joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. And so this is what Christianity is all about. It's us coming helpless to God, recognizing that we are not able to produce a life that's pleasing to God in of ourselves, only to find that God has made us for humble dependence on him. And he wants to help us live a life that's pleasing to God. That It's not meant for us to try to earn our way to God, but rather for us to come empty-handed and throw ourselves on his mercy and find that he is good and faithful and able to empower us to live a life that we can't live in and of ourselves. Just like flowers need sourcing and nutrients to produce lovely looks and smells for us to produce a life that looks good, that's pleasing to others, that creates a pleasant aroma in an environment. We need God's sourcing in our lives, and that's the gift of God. We just need to put our trust and our confidence in Jesus Christ to produce this, and that's what he wants to give us. And so the Apostle Paul uses this analogy. He says it's kind of like uh, somebody that wants to get drunk and on alcohol. You see, what do you, what do you have to do to come under the influence of alcohol to get different actions that you wouldn't otherwise get um, out of someone? Well, first of all, they got to think about alcohol and uh, its benefits enough to want to pursue taking hold of it and and getting it into their lives and they got to consume it and the more they consume it the more they come under its influence and it starts to produce different results and of course some of those are very negative and you got mean drunks angry drunks depressed drunks or you know um happy drunks that act silly but then end up doing really stupid things they regret later or whatever uh but in the same way when it, when it comes to coming under the influence of jesus christ we have to think about um, going to him and, and coming under his influence and saturating ourselves in his word and, and what it is to please him. And then talk to him, talk to him, spend time with him, asking him to help us to live a life that's pleasing to him, to come into us and, and fill us and, and lead us and guide us and direct us and help us and rescue us. Um, from ourselves that wants to go our own way and do our own thing. And the more that we are saturating ourselves on his words and we are praying according to his will, the more we're coming under his influence. And now we're taking him with us everywhere we go and we're spreading his loveliness because we are continually daily connecting ourselves to his sourcing, to his nutrients, to his life-giving power of love. And that love is compelling us to do things we otherwise wouldn't do for good. And now all of a sudden we're producing characteristics that are helpful for everyone around us. And we're a blessing because we're, we're reflecting God who is a blessing. And so I hope this helps you um, to seek him, to think about how to please him today. And it starts with just receiving him as a free gift. And then it, it, it goes on to looking to his word and saying, Lord, how can I please you? And he says, love others the way that I've loved you. Make your life uh, about depending on me, 
to find a way to bless other people with what I've put in your hand to do. And that's where fulfillment and joy comes from and what makes the most of life and what ends in eternal life. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Yellow Chair. If this information was helpful to you, would you do us a favor and click the like button on our YouTube videos to help us in the algorithm and get this information out to others? Also, if you have a friend or an acquaintance that you think this could be helpful to, make sure you share it with them and hit the subscribe button as well and we'll drop a new video for you each week that will hopefully help you in all things pertaining to life and godliness because we want fullness of joy for you. Have a great day.